Hello, welcome back. In the last chapter, we have created a scenario using Load Runner controller, and we have run for 50 virtual users test. All right, and then if you notice that the goal of the load testing is to figure out what are kind of issues that is going to occur when the system is under load, right? And that is the reason that why we do load testing. Right, and then we will figure out various different kinds of issues, and the issues may be related to application or may be related to system. So we basically analyze the result and figure out what are the issues and how to tune or optimize. Okay, so that is the that is the main goal of load testing. And another thing is that if we if you are running if you are running your IT shop then it may happen that you have some expansion plan right so in that case like whatever number of users number of customers you have right now it may increase all right and then you need to figure out you need to do a capacity planning to make sure that you can scale and you can meet the demand in future so these are the issues that load testing is going to address all right and already we have given a run and then we have some result and in this chapter our goal is to analyze those results and figure out what are the bottlenecks we have and we can, we, we want to make a executive report all right so that is what we're going to do we are going to analyze the result so here is the load testing tool as you see here is a controller and the controller is going to uh, control uh, scenario and the uh, and here are the load generators uh, in this picture I have three load generators injecting load to the system under test and from the controller we are also monitoring the system like various uh, system resources like CPU memory and so on and then one more thing is missing here and this is the part which is missing here uh, and so this is thing so, so essentially what is going to happen is that uh, once we collect the result from the system under test and also whenever we are testing right remember that web underscore URL and all those APIs that we that uh, that uh, that we the, the, all those APIs it takes up so so remember those transactions we put between a request right so those those data and the system resources and all those things will be collected and stored in a result store this result store can be a file system or it even can be a database all right so the results are stored and here is another tool that load runner that that hp load runner provides to analyze so analyzer is going to read the data from the result store and analyze and make sense of the data that we have collected so this is what the analyzer does so basically there are two kinds of analysis okay so one is your real-time analysis and real-time analysis is that something that you are doing when you are running the test all right so basically you are just patiently waiting to ensure that the test finishes properly like say for example whenever you are running the test let's say a couple of users failed so in that case instead of waiting for the test to run probably you need to abort the test and see what is the problem and after you taking care of those problems you may restart it again okay so that is what is called real time analysis real time analysis okay or sometimes it is called wet watch and wet okay so two kinds of analysis so one is real-time analysis and real-time analysis you just do just to ensure that let the test over without any issues all right and the second kind of analysis which we do is called post test analysis okay so in post test analysis once the results are collected in the result store then using analyzer we can make sense of the data that we have collected and essentially there are three kinds of post test analysis we must do 
and also there are some more things those are optional so first post test analysis is the virtual user matrix so in this case you like to know how your virtual users are running with respect to elapsed time so if this is your elapsed time and this is the virtual user and then you need to know like you know you need to make sure that all the, let's say you are running 50 users so ensure that you are following a ramp up pattern and then you have enough of steady state to collect data and then you have a kind of ramp down uh, or uh, just stop immediately okay so whatever makes sense uh, you know uh, it doesn't matter but we need to make sure that we have a good steady state time and also you need to make sure that what are the number of er users that are erroring out if any okay so that is the first analysis which is called v user matrix next analysis is called response time analysis so the response time is that remember whenever this load generators are essentially executing some functions like web underscore url web underscore submit and so on so basically all this thing what is happening is that they are, they are executing some business processes or let's call them as a task and we are measuring those tasks how much those tasks take by using lr underscore start transaction and finishing with lr underscore end transaction so basically whatever the time that takes all those things would be collected and then that is where we do response time analysis in the response time analysis the first thing that we used to we generally look is something like this this is elapsed time and this is the average response time of those transactions like you know some response time might come like this or some spike and all this thing okay and you know basically another another response time may may may, may go like this and so on and another thing that we we do which is called 98 percentile response time so don't worry about if you do not know what is 90th percentile i have a, i have a complete video on 90th percentile and another thing maybe we we'll, we like to know in response time is the transactions per second versus elapsed time and here transactions per second that means how many transactions i do per browse lesson or how many transactions i do for you know attempt quiz and so on so so this is the graph is so the, the the measurement is elapsed time versus transaction summary and also there are some other other things which we're going to look in detail whenever we are going to open up a analysis session using load runner analy analyzer the next one that we we do for the analysis is called resource uses recall that we are collecting the resources of the system under test and this system under test just for simplification i have given you one machine it may happen that this might consist of multiple things like a say for example a web server or maybe let's say two web server and two web servers are connecting to some kind of app server and this app sub, you know and behind app server there are let's say cluster of databases okay so in that case what you do we collect the metrics for each of these system under test okay and we generally collect cpu memory network uses and so we generally collect cpu memory and network uses and also there are some other other kind of you know uh, things can be collected and and again uh, in this course we are not going to discuss all those things but the idea is give enough of information the system information so that we can say you know what kind of issues are occurring by looking at those data right and also one more thing very important we do collect the resource utilization of load generator in any case you you know you never ever do a load testing by saturating the machine the load generator machine if you saturate the load generator machine then all those data whatever we're going to collect is just worthless okay so so that is the reason that we need to uh, you know ensure that we, we also keep track of the, uh, the the resource utilization of those machines so once we got the resource utilization then we can look various various uh, you know analysis 
like CPU versus elapsed time, memory versus elapsed time and so on. So this is on a on an overview is uh, analysis and in this chapter we are going to take a look in more detail.